Rosa. Me, Mario. Let's go. Let's have fun. Nintendo. Oh yeah. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to, that you guys are listening in again on this uh, great Friday. My name is Chris. My name is Noah. I'll be guesting for you guys today. And this is the Nintendo Show. Um, so this morning we've got some music playing from uh, the Super Mario 3D World soundtrack uh, that released a few years ago uh, for the Nintendo Wii U. As long as that music is playing. It is. Okay, so it's a little bit quiet in the background today, but uh, it is there, and it is uh, listening in for you guys. So, um, before we get started, um, you guys are probably have already noticed that Josh isn't here this week. Um, he's actually um, currently in line waiting for a uh, Super Nintendo Classic Edition uh, over at a Best Buy or a Toys R Us. I can't remember if he decided on one or the other or not. Uh, but uh, he's over there waiting, getting ready for that, um, and he's excited, of course. Uh, so, Noah, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, hey, who? yeah, sure. Uh, like I said, my name's Noah. I'm from Allen Park, so <laughs> I'm in the area. Uh, it's it's great to be able to have late starts and then still only have to take five minutes to get here, and you're still on time. Uh, I think the biggest reason that I got into gaming... Uh, especially Nintendo games, because that's what I've had um, until... I didn't have anything non-Nintendo until 2011, so definitely grew up with the classics. Um, the biggest thing was just sitting around with my family, watching my dad play Donkey Kong 64, and telling him, hey, you need to go this way, or do this, or do that, when he screwed up. And uh, that was a lot of fun, so um, that's why I started actually like enjoying games. And my favorite Nintendo game... Why do you give me such a difficult question like this? This wasn't me. This is this, this is, is Josh's this, behind the oh scenes. Oh man, okay, this guy, so. he's not even here, and he's he's imposing he's, this this tough will on me. My favorite Nintendo game, I think, has to be Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door for the GameCube. Okay. The story is great. The gameplay is great, and um, I honestly think it's a game that you can enjoy without any like prior Nintendo knowledge whatsoever. That's how that's how good the writing is. Nice. Um, so. You guys are probably already aware. Um, we're actually uploading last week's uh, show to YouTube as we speak, um, and that'll be linked to the Facebook page probably later today once I get to it. Uh, and of course, you guys make sure you like us on uh, Facebook, and of course, subscribe on Twitter or YouTube. Why do I keep saying Twitter? Because it's always Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, isn't it? That's sure. usually how it goes. Subscribe on YouTube uh, and like us on Facebook. We don't have a Twitter page, so. Try not to go there, but do go to the WUMD uh, Facebook and Twitter page um, and go ahead and go give those likes and follows, respectively. Um, and as always, we are, of course, not endorsed by Nintendo, although we would love to be. <laughs> uh, what a dream that would be. These are just our own views on the situations, and we're just kind of producing uh, this show to give you guys news that we've kind of found over the past week and kind of find that pretty interesting um, ourselves. So today's first topic, and it's a pretty expansive topic at that, um, is the new update that just came out for Super Mario Run on iOS and Android. The uh, There's a new feature that they introduced called Remix 10 uh, that does those courses that are in Super Mario Run uh, short and sweet. So you'll, ten, you'll challenge 10 very short courses in a row and as a matter of fact, the new character they just released, Daisy, Daisy, is lost somewhere along the way. And if you play enough courses in that uh, ten in that ten pack of courses, uh, you'll actually find her somewhere along the way. Uh, it also turns out that uh, as you play, you'll also be able to or you play some extra bonus games and a super bonus game. Wow, man, going all out to get various buildings for your kingdom as you run through this mode. So. Uh, there's a lot of new features that um, 
they've announced, and uh, we can go over a few more of those too. They even got new. There's new courses to explore in World Star. Um, there's a forest, a ship packed with coins. There's a, a lot of ships actually, a whole armada, um, and each course is like a new a new take on the Super Mario Run formula that we've seen so far. So that's pretty exciting for people who are uh, really into Super Mario Run. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another thing that. Uh is I mentioned before, but I'll mention it one more time, is uh, Daisy's actually a new playable character, and she's got her new double jump skill that's available in the game. So if you play enough of those Remix 10 courses, uh, Princess Daisy will actually join your group of friends. And she's actually originally from a land called Sarasa Land, uh, and her double jump ability lets her jump uh, in midair, so that's pretty. That's a new advantage, especially yeah, on those. Jumps, especially in Mario Run, where like you know, the, it's you're not able to like stop at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I think being, the ability to take that time to double jump and like plan out like where you're gonna go next uh, gives you, you know, a lot of times in Mario Run you're limited to up or down. I've noticed just mm -hmm. in the level design, uh, having the double jump kind of gives you that ability to choose. It's like in mid jump, you can either just fall or you can go up. So you know, mm -hmm. gives you a little more time to and a little make things a little more leisurely in mm -hmm. a game called Run. So you know, and it also adds that added effect of you know trying to get those those coins, mm -hmm. those red coins, or those things can be difficult to get to sometimes. And yeah, when sometimes you, get, you get like precise wall jumps, they actually get there normally. But Daisy can just say, you know what, I'm just gonna double jump. Works for me, and that'll probably and that'll probably make it a little bit easier for for newer players who kind of are trying to get used to the mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course they've got new buildings in Kingdom Builder mode, uh, so you've got brand new buildings from the bonus games in Remix Ten. So you want to try and get as many as you can. That's the ultimate goal. I mean, you want to make your your, your castle gotta be as good as possible, man. Yeah, it's gotta be great. Um, and they also changed the selection style for the way you get opponents in Toad Rally. Um, so you'll get less of a chance that you're going to get somebody who's drastically different from yours. So they prob they've kind of balanced the matchmaking a little bit, which um, I don't think I necessarily minded because I was still able to occasionally beat those mm -hmm. people who had like 9,999 or something of that nature. Hey, as long as they're starting to balance anything in their games, that's fine. Uh, if they could move some of that balance over to something like Splatoon 2 matchmaking, you know, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully this is a step in the right direction for things like that. Right. Um, one of the big significant things that are actually coming up is uh, the Nintendo World Championships. Mm, yeah. Those things um, back were back early 2000s when the N64 was coming out. Yeah. Those things were huge. Um, and it's nice to see a throwback to that mm. that time back then, and that Nintendo is kind of embracing their past and bringing it forth to a new generation. Yeah, they've they've finally uh, come to terms with the idea that you don't have to do something new and crazy every time, at least with regards to games. Like if you have, you know, like like your console or whatever, like the Switch, yes, that's pretty unique. Like the way the controllers are set up and the way it actually functions is pretty unique. But like with the games. Look at look at Zelda. They went back to the roots with Breath of the Wild. Look at Metroid: Samus Return just came out recently. It's mm -hmm. great. Like they've realized, hey, our past was really good. Maybe we should do more of that. And it's making me happy with their recent releases. Right. Uh, so they kick off this. Uh, the Nintendo World Championships kicked off at uh, on October seventh. So it's just a little bit more than a week away. Mm. Uh, and then that's at two p.m. Pacific time or uh, our local time at five p.m. Eastern. Um, and this is all going to take place in New York City uh, at Nintendo World Store mm. over on uh, 6th and 48th. Right. Um, and then uh, Metroid Samus Returns is a confirmed game in the tournament, which Ooh. is exciting. This going to be interesting. Yeah. It's the, and then uh, it's going to include the 16 top players across two age brackets from the tournaments that they had across the country earlier this year. Um, I think it was like a couple months ago. It was yeah, like, it, wasn't, it wasn't too long ago, but... Um. Yeah, I do. I do remember. I don't remember like any any of the names of the people who won, but uh, it was no, it wasn't too long ago. It's still fairly recent. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, Samus returns. I wonder how they're gonna do that. Maybe they're gonna have like cl clear this area as fast as possible or something like that. Yeah. Something those along along those lines. Mm hmm. That would be interesting to do. Um, to see something like that come along. That'd be. Uh, yeah, I was thinking like get through an area or like 
collect this, mu collect mm -hmm. these things, or Co like defeat collect this every, boss. Every power up in the area or something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. Um, there's a lot of ways you could go with Metroid because yeah, you, with the Maybe. just like the exploration of mm -hmm. it, that will be interesting to see. Maybe um, it'll be like fill out this map 100 percent for this area or something like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, and then of course, uh, one of the the biggest, more the bigger. Uh, indie games that's been coming out that's come out in the past couple of years, Stardew Valley, uh, which has been on pretty much everything else except a Nintendo system up until uh, 2018. Um, they finally have approved that they're going to have a release date for uh, Stardew Valley, and it's going to be coming sometime after the uh, new multiplayer update that mm -hmm. I have. So all of the features that you had um, with Stardew Valley before that Plus, the multiplayer is going to be coming in 2018 for the Switch. And I am so excited. Uh, Stardew Valley was one of my favorite games when it first came out. I think I sunk, like, over the week that it came out. I must have put, like, 40 or 50 hours into that game. Just, it's it's the best Harvest Moon experience I've had since I played, oh, one of them on the N64. It's been, it's been a long time since I've had a good, like game like that and it's so much more than just a farming simulator too it's um you you fight monsters you go mining you you go fishing you build relationships with the people in the town it's and everything is well written and the pixel graphics are beautiful and my favorite part of it is that the entire game is the work of one man and it's huge there's so much content in this game and this guy just he puts so much love and care into it, and it really shows. And it's amazing what one person can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's one of my favorite indie games that came yeah. out recently. Yeah, it's it's definitely along those lines of you know K story. You know, mm -hmm. how, like the pixel that guy he programmed that game mm -hmm. himself, and that's one of one of the greatest uh, indie games to have mm -hmm. ever released uh, to the public ever. And he started that thing as a freeware thing, mm -hmm. so he wasn't even looking for money out of this. Right. Uh, so it, it's great to see what, what one single person can do just in, with their own efforts. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, that multiplayer mode is coming to all versions. Um, so that includes the PC, the Xbox, PS4. All of those versions are getting multiplayer. Um, however, I'm not 100% sure if they're going to be doing cross-platforming. Um, oh, it'll be, be really interesting good. to see if they do that. Uh, it's certainly possible. Rocket League is already mm -hmm. yeah, I was planning to do that. Yeah, that with Rocket League, so... But, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I just happened to notice I forgot to shut the studio door, so if you want to talk about the next point um, while I go ahead and do that real quick. Right, so, um... <laughs> apparently Nintendo's run into a little uh, backlash with uh, their Switch games. Not in their quality, but in the icons that they're using on their home screens and in the eShop. Um, SteamWorld Dig 2 has tweeted out an image of their of the icon for it, and uh, a lot of backlash actually came out of that. I'm I'm not actually uh, familiar with uh, why there was so much backlash on it, but apparently it was enough to change it, which yeah. is uh, interesting. Actually, um, my uh, I actually read an article about this. I was kind of perusing through Google Play mm -hmm. uh, newsstand the other day, and I came across this article, and it was kind of interesting because it's like nobody was really concerned with the fact of the game being bad or not. It's just like everybody's so hung up on the fact that their Nintendo Switch home screen is cluttered with horrible icons, mm -hmm. which I can see where it's coming from, but I also can't. Yeah, I kind of get it. I mean... I'd like it better if the home screen was more customizable and you could just, like, I don't know, put it in a folder maybe. That would be good. Like, I think people are just complaining mostly because you've got these icons, like, on the screen all the time on the Switch, as opposed mm -hmm. to, like, the 3DS, where there's a lot of customizability to the UI, um, and that seems to be something that's really lacking for the Switch so far. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's just one of those things... Uh, Sonic Mania is a good example. Mm. Like people, the standard, I guess you could say, of people is that you want your your want your icons to have the logo in it somewhere and a meaningful uh, picture of the mm. main the, the the titular character. And it's just like, okay, 
Um, I, I, I mean, I can see where it's coming from, but at the other side of it, it's just like, I really couldn't care less what the icon right, looks it's, like. Right, it's the as icon. Long like, I'd like to actually play the game. It's the important part. Yeah, yeah, as long as the icon, I click the icon, the game launches in some semblance of a reasonable amount of time, and uh, I don't get any bucks. That's my main concern. Like, I couldn't care less about the icon. It's really kind of funny because uh, people people were kind of going over about Snake Pass when it was originally released uh, way back in March. Uh, they had the, the logo of the game, and then the snake was, like, kind of off to the side, and then they had the background was, like, one of the levels. Right. Well, what they did when they released the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 and the PC versions is the icon was just like a blue background with the snake's head on it. Mm. Of course, because those icons are smaller, they're not you quite as obvious. There to use, yeah. So their, their thought process was, we want to have unified branding across all of our platforms. So when they released an update for the Switch, they changed the icon to match the mm. other platforms. Of course because we're talking about it. Everybody kind of went crazy about that. And they're like, hey, I don't like this. This is plain. This does not look yeah, good on my good. Switch. You know, you know, that is kind of a shame, because I remember seeing the, the like, icon for Snake Pass, like, the, the logo for it. It looked, it looked pretty nice uh, on the old UI, you know. And they are actually bringing it back just because they have been listening. Just because um, there's so, so the, much backlash yeah. over it. And it's nice to see the devs actually are listening um, even Nintendo is, is starting to listen. I think we're, we're watching into it an era of, of gaming where the people, the voices of the gamers are actually being heard Which to some really semblance. Really to some semblance. I mean, I, I'm still going to say that I, I wouldn't see, you know, Pokemon, all the regions and all of the generations mm -hmm. and all of that. Like, that kind of a thing is just a, a logistical nightmare for any developer, programmer, producer, anything in the yeah. gaming industry. So stuff like that where it's like unreasonable, those are kind of going to the wayside, which is understandably right, so. Right, of course. So you can't take every idea from the fans because fans most often have... Fans have a lot of pretty dumb ideas. I, I can't even like sugarcoat it anyway like that. Like some people... I don't know. Some people think they know what they want out of a new Metroid game, and then Nintendo's like, we're going to make it our way and make it good. And then they're like, alright, yes, we doubted you. Thank you for making it good. Like, you know, a lot of fans think they're think they're uh, extra game design, which, uh, as as we're learning in our yeah. course, they are not. Because <laughs> yeah. there are a lot of things that, and a lot of nuances that go into actually designing a game. Oh, yeah. There's... Oh, man. With, with game design... that. There's just so many niche things that you need to know mm -hmm. about a game, and there's just, like, you, you have to be a computer science major, you have to be a software engineer major, you have mm -hmm. to be uh, an art major, all at the same time, yeah. literally, to, to, to get anywhere with, with game design. Mm -hmm. um, moving on, um, I'm going to have to skip that point just because I'm not quite familiar with the system. We were going to have Josh call in... Um, and check on him, seeing if he got managed to get a mm. SNES Classic. But um, I'm not quite up to snuff with with the phone system just yet. That's um, fair enough. So probably in a future episode, I'll, we'll probably eventually start opening up um, the calling in. Mm. Um, I will mention that the request line is 313-593-5515. Um, for future episodes. Um, so if you guys have an opportunity, um, I will definitely announce when I'm ready for somebody to call in. Um, but I just want to get the phone number out there. So you guys had it in the back of your head and were kind of preparing for for the future. Mm. So um, Pokemon, with its ever, it's with with the release date of Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon ever approaching, um, we have another um, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon update. Uh, there was a new trailer that was released mm -hmm. um, within the past week, uh, and there's actually now a mechanic that you can truthfully, re realistically surf. Yeah, it actually looks uh, it actually looks really good. I was I was like looking at it. There's the uh, like he was like doing tricks on this on this mantine as he's surfing between the islands, and I was like, 
are we Wave Racer 64 now? Is that what's <laughs> going on? I, this is this is actually amazing. Um, I'm I'm still a little sour on uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because there should have been Diamond and Pearl remakes. Um, that's where that money should have gone. I would have loved that. Because I'm biased and I love Diamond and Pearl and Platinum <laughs> are my favorite games in the series. Um, but now that I'm seeing more of it, it does look like it's it's actually going to be. My my worry was that it was just going to be a rehash. Um, mm. But it does look like it's doing something new, like um, Black and White Two did, mm-hmm. which um, which Black and White Two, Black and White and Black and White Two also ended up being some of my favorite in the series. And uh, and I kind of had the same like knee jerk reaction when they announced Black and White Two. Because mm-hmm. it's just a two. Like, w- what could be really be that different? And then it was. There was a lot of cool, different stuff. That yeah, they added I, I remember they had like uh, two or three new gems that they added, mm-hmm. and they took and out the a couple. And the story was completely different. Oh which yeah, was really good. So I'm more optimistic for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon now that I've seen a little more. Um, mm-hmm. They did show off a little bit of story in this gameplay. Oh, uh, oh, what's her name? Lily. Yeah, uh, not Lily. The the Kahuna that actually has a, a challenge now. Oh, it's the she's the artist. Yeah, she. Yeah, I know who you're talking Sun about. Moon, she didn't even have a trial, but she actually is getting one now. So you know, adding new content like that is actually, you know, making me hopeful for this game. I wonder now. This would be something interesting, and this is kind of a theory of mine. I wonder if they'll actually bring in like more than just eight, you know, uh, trials. Because mm-hmm. you know the the whole thing with with Pokemon has always been you know eight, eight badges, games. eight gems. It's like powers mm-hmm. of two. You've got eight gyms, four elite four, plus one champion. Fighting into your one champion, and then you have your rival. one rival fight. Yeah, so you've got kind of two main mm-hmm. people that you're trying to beat eventually, and mm-hmm. then four, and then eight. So it just kind of trickles down from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I wonder if they'll do more because I didn't like the way they actually shook up the formula with Sun and Moon with instead of doing gyms. The typical gyms it was the it was the island trials which was actually really cool and those and and I personally enjoyed the trials mm-hmm. um, they're one of those that that um, yeah they're they're really not great for replayability yeah. but I mean once you figure it out it's easy but at the same time it's like it's still fun to it's figure nice it out. Yeah, yeah it's nice to have something different than you know the typical uh, just, just hey, go go fight all these people in this gym along this singular path, mm-hmm. and then fight the fight the uh, fight the gym later. Now th- this um, oh no this news that I received earlier this morning, and I kind of read that, and it was like there's a side of me that's like oh man, inherent and it's the end of an era, but the other side of me is like they still had that going, right? Yeah, it's, it's like. Crazy. The the Wii hasn't been rel well the Wii really hasn't been as relevant as it has been since you know 2013. Yeah, and even before then, like the Wii U, that was right just after the Wii U came out, so it was barely hanging on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, that's a shame that the Wii Shop channel is is dying in January 2019. That's still a long way away. That's still a long that's time still, like, though. Over yeah. a year away, it, man. But it's still it's just like. But how am I supposed to buy my very quality Wii Shop games like Sexy Poker <laughs> and all the other terrible things that are flooded with the with the Wii Shop channel? How yeah. am I supposed to get those anymore? I mean, even the like even the Wii the Wii games that they put on the the eShop, those are like still port like those are Wii Shop games mm. originally, and they ported them to the Wii U, and now. Yeah, and I now mean, eventually Switch. the Switch is going to get them. Yeah. It's like the same thing with the Super Mario Galaxy. They got they put them up on the eShop, so mm-hmm. it was kind of like signaling that, yeah, we're we're finally killing off the Wii. We're finally like <laughs> done with the Wii. Uh, you can move to the Wii U now. And Fun- funnily enough, they are releasing uh, Just Dance 2018 on the Wii. It's coming out on the Wii. That's and the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 as well. It's coming out on literally everything that could poss- it could possibly come out on right now. I'm surprised they didn't go back and make a GameCube version at this point. But <laughs> it's uh, it's amazing to me. I, I saw that news and I was like, the the Wii? You know that was you know, there was two of them ago, right? That yeah. was the last console. That was, that was two of them. You don't you don't have to keep supporting that. It's not important anymore. Just put it on the Switch, which they are. Yeah. So, and I, I think know, on the other side of it, though, I think on the other side of it, though, is like that the audience that they're targeting with mm. that probably don't have a Wii U, and <laughs> oh. probably don't have a Switch because they either a 
have no interest in it, or B, just have the Wii because they were like, hey, this is a thing that everybody can do. Right. And and you can see kind of I can see where like the Wii U and the Switch are kind of tailoring back towards the gamer side yeah, of things, as opposed to the accessibility of, of mm-hmm. just doing everything with everyone. And I mean, if it's as big as what the the if, and the Wii, that just goes to show you the longevity and the success of the Wii. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that people are still making games for it and people are still buying games for it. Yeah, for that matter, it's pretty crazy. Speaking of. Um, did you know that um, they just Nintendo announced uh, the other day that they are having they have this year with the Switch, this is the biggest launch year they've had since 1995, which was before the N64 came out. So this is outsold the N64, it's outsold the GameCube, it's outsold the Wii, and the Wii was huge. The Wii was humongous. It was amazing, and and the Switch has already beaten that this year and this year still has quite a bit of time left especially with the holiday coming up with mario odyssey and you've got a lot of good titles coming out before the end of the year xenoblade chronicles 2 Mm -hmm. um like there's going to be a lot more sales so this could be nintendo's biggest software hardware launch ever yeah if 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 uh if circumstances happen correctly which is yeah and i mean insane i i could already foresee like I can remember the the holidays. This is kind of a side story. My mm. brother had an old green, one of the green oh, DSIs, dude, and my this is literally. I swear to you, this is the only time my mom has ever waited in line on Black Friday for mm. anything. That's yeah. That that that's like that's crazy, and it's just it's funny because that's like. The only time my mom has ever waited in line for anything right. Black Friday, and it was a Nintendo thing, no less. That mm-hmm. <laughs> that is just uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy how how huge of an impact like these things have had, you know? Like the launch of the DS was also like huge. Like so many people got that, especially because Nintendo was super smart and they said, "Hey, remember Super Mario sixty four, your favorite game ever for a lot of people." You could play it on the go now, and mm-hmm. that was one of the mo- that was one of the biggest things they did to actually get uh, DS units sold, which was amazing. Um, 3DS as well. Um, had a it was Ocarina of Time launch. 3D. Ocarina of Time 3D is really what sold that system. That sold that yeah, system. They, 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 they know how to move systems and they know how to make games, but it's amazing to me just how many Switches have actually sold. When it seems that every time you go to a store, they don't have any for the next six months. <laughs> right. It's it's amazing that it's that's having this good of a launch when it seems like supplies are so low. Although I know recently they've been getting a lot better. They've been getting better, but I do remember back in when I got mine in mm-hmm. June, it was just it was. I got lucky mm-hmm. with a Target, and it had neon systems, and oh, those oh, were unicorns then. Like those were impossible to find. Uh, I was I when I when I first got mine I got mine back in March um, during like not during launch not launch week but like a week or two after during like the first reshipment that they had um, I got up at six thirty and went to a Toys R Us and stood in line they open it they open at ten fifteen <laughs> um, I got there at six forty five and they were for sure getting twenty units in. I was 14th in line by the time I got there at 6:45 to stand out there for an, for three and a half hours just to get a chance of getting a switch. It oh, was insane. I remember e- Amiibo, Amiibo oh, craze gee, back man. in 2015. Uh, this was, oh man, this was senior night, like a day after my birthday. Mm. And, like, I got out of senior night, I went with Josh and a couple of our buddies, and we went to a Target. Mm. And just waited there for, like, all night. We just had a tent and everything. And we waited there all night for, oh god, it was Lucina, and I want to say it was Jigglypuff. That's what it was. It was Jigglypuff that was coming out that. Mm. And it was, like, Charizard, Greninja, Lucina, and Jigglypuff. I gotta get me one. They're kind of like they're restocked now. Like yeah, mostly amiibo or the cards, but I don't want the cards at all. I know that they're readily available and they you can just buy them, but I don't. I want. I, I want the statue. figure. Yeah, the I point, want a little statue. The point is like the point of making basically what it, what equates to Smash Bros. trophies in real life is that you want the trophies, not just some card that lets you like do the functionality. No one cares about that. Everybody mm-hmm. cares about like the actual like 
figure. Like, so you can do, like, you know, in Brawl, where you can move the trophies around and pose them and take pictures. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. Because that's just cool. Just physical, you know, real life. You know, oh, I got right. my I need desk. To, I need to, so, are you, so are you an in-box or out-of-box collector? I am an out-of-box collector. Good, yes. Because, Thank you. Because, like, what's, keeping What's the in, point of buying a thing if you're not going to, like... Utilize Use the it. feature. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like I bought the I I didn't get any of the original Wave Splatoon mm. amiibo because I was just like that was at the point where I was just like yeah, amiibo or th like I I like my amiibo. Right, don't get yeah, me wrong, but yeah. it was just like I didn't really necessarily need them because I knew Josh was gonna get all of yeah. them, and he literally has all of them. It's every single one. That's crazy. And so I borrowed his. I caved this time around with Splatoon two because I liked the look mm. of the the green. Inkling boy. Yes. I like the look of like they put for him. So I picked him up and I got and all I got all the stuff for that. Right. And, well I mean you're already objectively wrong because you said like and inkling boy in the same sentence. Because <laughs> uh, the boy is objectively the worst one. So I'm sorry for you. <laughs> the uh, the big thing too that I've uh, and back to my story about the amiibos and waiting to target. Yeah. We ended up the it like we we ended up. They said they would have like three or four Lucinas. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They ended up not having any Robin or any Lucina at all Ooh. at this target. So we were like for a solid Are year. We were mad me? at this target. Like mm. we didn't step foot in this target. We didn't look at this target. Dude, we've got a reason too. If they say they're gonna have it and then they don't have it, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so we ended up going across town and actually to another city about. And to a Toys R Us over on Gratiot, over by Macomb Mall, mm. and we're waiting in line. They send, they stand me in line, and I'm just like, I'm waiting, and and lo and behold, I, they they're probably they probably still envy me to this day for this. Then I ended up getting the last Lucina. I got mm. a Charizard, and I got a Greninja that morning, but I got the last Lucina, and mm. and. Oh my God! the The ride to drop everybody off after that because <laughs> we're already silence. we're already tired as it is. Like we're already exhausted mm. from staying up yeah, all night. I'm sure. And we're just like you can just feel the tension in the car. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> and this is back when it's like a mer uh, this is back when Josh was driving a Mercury Grand Marquis, mm. and this is like the 90s one, so before they redesigned to make oh, it look man. like the, the one that you see most often mm. now. So I was like half worried that they would just like throw me in the trunk and just, just like, leave we're me done there. With you. <laughs> just this, we're, we're, yeah, hope you enjoy that Lucina. <laughs> You're never getting out of this car, but I hope you enjoy your your amiibo, man. <laughs> right. Oh man, that's crazy. So we, uh, so uh, the next piece of uh, info that we've got, kind of <laughs> <laughs> moving on from that tangent, there, um, they've got another um, collection of information for the Legend of Zelda. They're bringing yeah, out nice. the Encyclopedia. Mm. Um, so it's continuing in the trend with Hyrule Historia. So we had Hyrule Historia mm -hmm. back when uh, Skyward, Sword came, Skyward out. Sword came out, and that's so between then and now we've kind of had a new story come out. So it'll mm -hmm. be interesting. Game Theory's already kind of put out their their theory I don't, don't with. Don't ever talk to me about Game Theory, man. I can't take them seriously anymore. <laughs> well, they did an episode on the timeline and where mm. Breath of the Wild would fit in, right? And they placed it at the end of the um, Hero is Defeated timeline. Hero is Defeated is kind of a dumb timeline. <laughs> Oh, th that's neither here nor there, but that makes sense. But the because they they basically send with with um, Calamity Ganon mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why they did it, and then another big one was because of the Lionels. Yeah. And the only time you ever saw Lionels was in the Heroes Defeated mm -hmm. timeline. So it's kind of an interesting thing that they they did that, and that's kind of where they went with that. Right. Yeah. It's it'll be interesting to see where Nintendo officially places it. In before it's in the Wind Waker timeline. <laughs> it's, there's, there's no way it would be. But, I mean, to be fair, though, it's interesting because in Breath of the Wild, Zelda references Twilight Princess, Ocarina mm -hmm. of Time, and Wind Waker in her, like, speech. In, like, there's, like, the ceremony they're doing when she's officially knighting Link. Mm -hmm. they, she references all three of those, like, heroes previously. So, like, if those are in separate timelines... How do they know about it? Like, what does that what does that mean? 
Well, if you think about it, and this is kind of like something that they talked about, is the fact that, you know, Zelda is the incarnation of the yeah. goddess Hylia. Mm. And there are Zeldas in between that, but the ones that are usually in the games are usually just, are usually blessed by goddess Hylia. You're right. Which is the Triforce of Wisdom. wisdom. So there's a possibility that, like, that She's tangent kind of, of the wisdom is, like, multiple universes. Right. So you think each timeline is a different universe, and that's where you kind of get that point of, right. well, she knows about these because she's the goddess and she knows about everything. And right. this, it could be the, the goddess Hylia speaking directly through Zelda. Mm -hmm. uh, Man, 320 pages. That's, that's yes. huge. 320 pages of, of uh, everything to know about Zelda. It's literally... it's it, it, And I can tell you that for me, it probably still won't be enough. <laughs> Probably I will take as not. much Zelda info as I can get. Um, you can pre-order it on Amazon right now, um, and it's a comprehension collection of enemies and items, potions and pose, and expansion of the lore touched upon in Hyrule Historia. Mm. So we'll see more. We'll probably see an ex uh, an updated timeline, which is probably almost. If they don't, that's kind of dumb. Yeah, it'd be uh, it'd be a little foolish. I think. There's uh, concept art. You got screen caps, maps, um, main characters and their relations in their games, mm -hmm. languages, and just more. Uh, and there's even in, in within this encyclopedia, there's an exclusive interview with Eiji uh, uh, Anuma. Mister Anuma, man's a legend. Um, and this is, of course, the last of the Goddess Collection trilogy. So you've got Hyrule Historia. Art and artifacts, mm -hmm. and then you now have the encyclopedia. Mm. That's gonna be really cool. Um, I actually believe it or not, I actually went to a physical bookstore uh, the other the other week. I actually was in Barnes and Noble for the first time in uh, years, uh, <laughs> and I so I was actually there looking for a set of dice to use for for our Dungeons and Dragons campaign because I always end up using everybody else's because I didn't have my own set yet. So <laughs> I was there. And I did see arts and artifacts uh, while I was there, and I thought about it, but then I remembered that I'm broke, so I didn't <laughs> buy it. But uh, I was looking through it, and that's also a very cool, um, very cool book. I have Hyrule Historia at home. Uh, that, that sits on my coffee table, because where else would it go? Right. I um, believe my brother has mm -hmm. Hyrule Historia. I'm not as big a Zelda fan as Josh or David, mm -hmm. my brother, um, but I definitely... I definitely like Zelda. Yeah. There's no reason. There's there's, there's no, no reason denying that. To, guess, yeah. But uh, they're more into it. They get all this Zelda stuff. Yeah. My thing is Pokemon. Yeah. By and large, yeah. my thing is That's Pokemon. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely. Um, I'm definitely. I think Zelda is my favorite Nintendo series. Um, bar like side series, I, I do. I do think the Paper Mario series is probably my favorite thing that Nintendo's ever done. Uh, and Mario and Luigi is also a very good series uh, for me as well. I love uh, Partners in Time and uh, Bowser's Inside Story. Um, but yeah, I do think Zelda is probably the biggest thing, just because I I mean, I connect with that the most. The first game I ever beat was Wind Waker. Mm -hmm. um, that was when I was very young, and uh, <laughs> kind of goes back to like telling my dad where you should go and how you should play. He, he's in Dragon Roost, and he forgot that he has the grappling hook. <laughs> and he's trying to cross the, the lava pit to the boss room. And he's like throwing skulls into the lava to maybe make a bridge, and I'm like, "You, why don't you use the grappling hook you just got?" And he he was like, "You know what? You do it then." <laughs> so I said, "Okay," and then I beat the Wind Waker, <laughs> and that was my first experience with the Zelda game. Like you know, just being thrown into it, and it's honestly one of my. That's another one of my favorite games of all time. It's Wind Waker, just because. Dude, Link is a, Link is amazing in that game. He's actually a character. He he's, has emotions. He, he, it's yeah, cool. He emotes. <laughs> he's just a kid trying to save his sister. You're not some magical knight trying to like bestowed by the goddess. You actually have to prove your own worth. And you're just at the end of the day, you want to go back home with your sister. So it's pretty good. Yeah, you know, you know, grandma, you know, grandma. You want to have some grandma you. soup? Yeah. Grandma yeah. cares about she you. She really does. That she wants you to come home safe. She cares about you so much. Uh, my Grandma my is too pure for this world. My first, my first full experience with a full Zelda game mm -hmm. was Twilight Princess, mm. and it's I good one to borrowed it, and I actually ended up borrowing a 
buddy of mine, like a GameCube controller from him, mm-hmm. and the copy of the game. Now I played this on the Wii because I didn't Wii. have a GameCube. Just you just ran the GameCube. Copy I just ran on the, the Wii. GameCube yeah. copy on the Wii, and I played through that game. I sunk fifty hours into that game, and it was just the best experience. It's really good. It really Twilight, is. People sleep on Twilight Princess, but it's amazing, it, and the, and the, especially the HD version as well is so good on the Wii U. And it's amazing. The thing that I appreciate most about it is just the fact that it's a more mature mm-hmm. game. Yeah. Like, it was rated teen. Yeah. In first first time in the when series. When it was first you know? released. So it's, it's one of those things, it was a more mature game, so it was just one of those things that I enjoyed personally because it wasn't like too, it was, it's a Zelda game, but it's intense enough that it's, uh, yeah, the story is, is really like, you know. It's a lot different than the usual Zelda fair. Um, you've actually got, you know, pretty high stakes in Twilight Princess. Like, you mm-hmm. know, the, the entire world is... I mean, usually the entire world's going to be consumed, but in Twilight Princess, it's kind of already happening, and you have to stop it as it's happening, you know? Mm-hmm. Which is... It's very... It's uh, And, you know, Minda is a really well-written character. She's, she's really developed, um, and her story is very interesting. So, yeah, I see exactly where you're coming from with that, you know, the idea of the more mature story. Mm-hmm. And... I think that's one of the reasons why Twilight Princess is so strong, is because it is that different than, you know, everything else in the series. It harkens back to even Majora's Mask, mm-hmm. which was, yes. wasn't released too far prior yeah, to that. Yeah, that wasn't too far sooner. It was 2001, if I remember correctly. 2001 for that, and then 6 or 7 for Twilight Princess? I want to it was 2006, because it was a launch title for the Wii, yeah. and it was a dual release with the GameCube. Mm-hmm. And you either played right-handed with motion controls on the Wii, or you played classic left-handed Link yeah. in, uh, in, uh, in the GameCube version. Mm-hmm. And, and side note to that, it, it's very frustrating that they're making him right-handed now. Yeah, I mean, because I it's, get it. It's, like, it's you know. like, you don't... There's no motion controls outside of, you know, using the Maybe switch the controller yeah, it's like there's to no aim. Motion controls at all. There's like virtually nothing to do with motion controls. So why is Link still right-handed? Um, bec- and I mean the argument is mostly now that um, like historically, um, if you were training to be a knight, if you were left-handed, you were forced to become right-handed because like there weren't people who knew how to train left-handed people, and right-hand dominance was actually is actually like kind of it's. It's pretty unwieldy to have a left-handed sword user, um, just because of like the awkwardness of like you know, it's 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 an awkward thing, and uh, I think they touched on it in Skyward Sword if I remember correctly. Um, that Link is left-handed in that game, but he had to learn to use his right hand because he's training to become a knight, mm-hmm. and that's the whole thing is that when you're learning to use a sword, when you're training to be a knight, if you're left-handed, that gets forced out, and you become right-handed anyway. So that kind of explains it, and that also applies to Breath of the Wild, because he is a royal knight in the family of royal knights. Right. So, even if he was left-handed at some point, he wouldn't be anymore. Right. But, you know, it's it's still, I do understand the, the frustration, because, you know, it's ever since Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, um, even, like, Link to the Past, I believe, he was still left-handed, which was a very interesting, very different thing. Um, yeah. And I know that it that personally is original. important to you because you're also left-handed. Right. So, it, it, so it's, it's, it's kind of like it's like it's a it's a for me, Link will always be left-handed. I don't care if he's right-handed mm-hmm. in the game. He's yeah. left-handed. Period. Just end he's of story. He's left-handed in a lot of games, so you're you're okay. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they they come back with that. Um, if they if they bring him back to being left-handed. And I think I think another big part of it was just like uh, how the shield functions, you know, mm-hmm. because in uh, in Ocarina of Time, Jorah's Mask, and Wind Waker, you you held R to bring up the shield, mm-hmm. and then in, uh, in Twilight Princess, you held R to bring up the shield on the GameCube version, um, but on the Wii version, you used the nunchuck, um, and that was I think why like the the motion controls and the nunchuck did it as well, but then in Breath of the Wild. In Skyward Sword, it's it's on the nunchuck as well, and then in Breath of the Wild, when you Z-target, you automatically shield. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just kind of, like... I think it's also more just streamlining the way that, like, the combat works, which, mm-hmm. I mean, 
they did a really good job because the combat in Breath of the Wild is like the best in the series. So you know, right? Yeah, I mean, it's really more of a minor gripe than anything yeah. else. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just because it's like that was a connection you had with the character. It's like, yeah, we're both left-handed, and then he's not anymore. But it's like, no, he'll always be left-handed. He's he's always left-handed, even when he's not. He's even when he's not, he's left-handed. Because you know what? I'll, I'll say this. You never see him write, but I'll guarantee it. He writes with his left hand, and he sword <laughs> he plays with his, his right. He sword plays with his right. That's definitely possible. Because like, I know, you know a lot of left-handed place, people that do that. If you're to be a knight, you, you learn to sword fight with your right hand, but that doesn't mean you have to stop using your left hand to do anything else. It's like you, I, you kind I, of become ambidextrous in a way. I use a mouse with my right hand. That's how I learn, because right. the mouse is on the right side. Because, because it's so much easier for a mouse to just be on the right <laughs> side. Uh, that makes sense. So, kind of a side note, because we've kind of gone off on tangents a couple times, which is <laughs> fine. It's great, because we kind of had a little bit less in terms of uh, stuff to cover today, so those tangents really definitely help <laughs> uh, keep the show flowing and kind of fill out that time slot that we've mm. got. Uh, but I do want to mention that the encyclopedia, the Zelda encyclopedia, does come out in April of next year. April of next year. So they don't have an exact date yet, but you've got time to save those quarters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't I don't mean just go literally take a bag of quarters to Barnes & Noble. Do you think they I won't? won't? I'll do it. They won't. I'll do it all that long. They, they don't appreciate it. I know for a fact I wouldn't appreciate it. <laughs> I had one time I had a guy pay for a ten, thing $10 in quarters, mm. and he just had a bucket. See, if you, if you at least roll them first, then it's better, you know. And you say, hey, here's five bucks, here's five bucks, good, I did it. There, there you go, no hassle for you. But if you do come in with, like, the plastic bag of, of quarters, you're, offic- you're, you're, you're officially that guy. You're, you know, you know the one. Yeah, you know it's one. like, I don't, I don't appreciate Yeah, the, I am not a fan of this. It's like, you're slowing my line down, I have four other customers that need help, why did you do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, April though, man. How am I supposed to save money when I'm going to Yomacon and things like that? Yes, I forgot. I'm how, going am I to... s- how am I supposed to save money when I'm going to Yomacon? Yeah, we'll have to coordinate because Josh mm. and I are, are going to. Yeah. We'll have to get our like. We'll have to get everybody in a group chat or something, mm-hmm. and we'll have to. Uh, oh, I wonder. Talk um, about like coordinating. I know they're gonna do tournaments and stuff there. I wonder what they're gonna do. Maybe a little Smash Bros. I'd be down for that. I'd be down, yeah. I'd, I'll be, be, down I'd be down to go lose at Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, I'll bring my Switch with me. I know they're going to have a game room. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. One of those days, one of the days we're going to, de- I'm definitely planning on just like spending the entire day doing the game room. Mm-hmm. One of the days is going to be like, uh, I'm going to be cosplaying. I'll be a Pokemaniac. Oh, dang. So. I think I'm going to cosplay all three days, but I'm doing more on the, see, on the anime side of things. See, I anime. can't really cosplay all three days because you've seen the costume that I had. Yeah, that thing is. Uh, I you, can't you, really you move just, like, very die. fast. Yeah. But considering that Although it's in it is, November, it's an amazing costume, though. It's so good. Once it comes in, and I do have to thank a, a friend of mine that sent that to me from from George. I had a friend mm. in Georgia who uh, sent that to me, and I greatly appreciated that because it was like. I was I was fully committed to making it myself, and then mm-hmm. we kind of talked, and he was like, "Hey, I got this. I don't really like how it came out. Do you want?" It? I was like, "Yes!" <laughs> <laughs> just immediately, just like yes. Hey, hey, I will pay. Yes. And he's like, uh, "If you could cover the show, oh, done, done. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Send it." <laughs> yeah, it turned out really good. It looks great. Yeah, um, I might have to do a little bit of um, stitching because they use fabric glue for it. I might have to do some stitching right. to kind of beef it up for the long term. Right. Yeah. Uh, wearing that I'll be doing at Yoma. That yeah. Just because it's days. a long day. Yeah. But I'll definitely be like, I'll have a. I'm thinking about getting like a piece of poster board and being like, lock eyes with me. I will battle you on 3ds. <laughs> you gotta. You gotta have the. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta have just like the sign that has the exclamation mark over it and just hold it up whenever someone <laughs> looks at you. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be good. But, uh, I know they're but, definitely. But how am I supposed to save any kind of money when Yoma comes around the corner? That's yeah, a, that's, that's a, a month away. Too. It's only a month away. It's a month away. Yeah. So well, a month and a few days. Mm. It's November third through fifth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, if any of you guys are, are listening from the the Metro Detroit area, I'll be at Yoma, and if you're going to Yoma, you can come say hi to me. I, yeah. I like saying hi to people. <laughs> I'm also in that boat. 
I will be a Yomakana. I'll be the one either dressed as uh, Roy Mustang. Okay. Or Crow from from Rooster Teeth's web series Ruby. Or um, who is the last? I will be Shizuo from Durarara. Getting all this anime. Gotta gotta film my anime quote. I gotta show you guys that I'm a I'm a total a total weeb. <laughs> that, that has to happen. I yeah. have to out myself before people find out. Yeah, it's, it's easy to just. Re- Josh, he's probably going to be doing something related to Zelda. He'll probably be Link because he's mm-hmm. already got he's got a, a Master Sword that's like it's like just sh- really well well. Yeah, made it's actually like steel, so I don't think he'll be able to take the sword you can with him. It. You can like as long as you don't take it out of the out of the sheath and anything, and you have that like they they have regulations for that that you can take it. You just can't like use it. Yeah, just leave Which it in fine. the leave yeah. it in the sheath because mm-hmm. he does have a sheath for it. Yeah, and he's got the um, he has a the metal cast, no. uh, Hylian shield. And Dang, he's got the whole thing going. Uh, so it'll be it'll be nice to see if he, if he decides to do that. Um, I'm pretty sure he would. I don't know if he. I have a message. I don't know if he texted me. Uh, oh, that's something else. So, hmm. anyways, um, yeah. I mean, the almost gonna be fun. Be I'm excited, um, and we'll probably, I'll probably, we've got plans in the pipeline to do a show about Yoma and our, our opinions on Yoma. Nice. Um, what we'll do, because it's November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, we'll probably have a show in the morning, mm-hmm. um, and then we'll go straight from, from the show, we'll go straight to Yoma. Right. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm definitely ex- I'm definitely excited for that. Mm-hmm. Yoma is always a good time. I went once a couple years ago, and I haven't been since, just because school's been crazy busy. Um, it's always been like I've had something come up that I could not go because it falls on the same weekend as YomaCon, which has bummed me out to no end. But finally this year I'm able to go, so mm-hmm. it's it's going to be really good. I'm super excited. Yeah, and it's supposed to be in Rensen and Kobo. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how they're going to do that, because I know Kobo is a good four or five blocks away from the Rensen. Yeah, it's interesting to see it get spread out this year. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see how it goes. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll have... They'll, they'll have something figured out. They always do. Yeah. I know the, the Facebook page has been pretty lit lately, because mm-hmm. I've, been, I've been getting notifications like... Hey, they posted in Yoma 2017. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go look at that. And it's usually something that I have no time for. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yo, did you know that? Okay, you were killing me. Okay, it's nine o'clock. What does nine o'clock time slot, man? Okay, how am I? Sp- how how are we? How are you? How do you function? Are you a morning person? No, I just have a very set schedule, and I just, just force myself. Out. Yeah, I force myself to work. That's fair enough. I am most decidedly also not a morning person. Um, I have to be here at eleven anyway, but you know that extra two hours. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> that was two hours I could have been playing Metroid, man. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to get give you more advanced warning <laughs> for that's, for hey, if you fine. if you decide to to um, please I understand become I'm more a, of a I'm not a planning kind of guy anyway become more of a regular uh, <laughs> regular host on the hey, show because be I know down if you guys are willing to have me yeah I mean it, it'd be definitely something we'll we'll talk about we'll consider yes. um, I'll talk to Josh about it seeing about it um, the only thing we'd have to do is we just have to get you the other contract and get you like <laughs> right. an official like hey, guest contract get you a door code and everything yeah boy uh we'll see about that uh but yeah i think that's about everything that we had to uh cover today um so as always thank you everyone for listening in to uh, into the nintendo show here at uh, radio wumd um next week i don't know what's going to be talked about yet uh, but it's definitely going to be something related to Nintendo or something related to the gaming world uh, in and of itself. Um, so, as always, I'm Chris. And I'm your guest, Noah. Maybe, as always, sometime in the future. <laughs> and uh, this has been Nintendo Bros.